Hey guys, Joshua Neal here. Today we're going to take a look at Intronauts Elegy. Now this is an intermediate to an advanced tune. The bass part itself is not that difficult, but the constantly changing time signatures make it a little bit challenging. So to help you out, I've got a full note and tab transcription downstairs for you to grab. Alright, let's zoom in. Okay, before we get started, just a couple things we need to go over. The bass player from Intronaut is using a five-string fretless bass with the band. So ideally you would want to be using the same or something similar. I'm using a six-string fretless bass. I'm just going to ignore the very high C string. Now if you have a five-string fretted bass, that's perfectly fine. You can use that. If you have a four-string bass, it's going to be a little bit more difficult, but you can uh, use it. You're just going to need to tune down a bit. Specifically, you'll need to take your low E string down to a B, your A down to an E, your D down to an A, and your G down to a D. You'll just need to tune everything down by a fourth, take it into what's called B standard. But if you have a five string or a six string, whether fretted or fretless, you're going to be just fine. So let's take a look at riff one in the transcription. It's going to look like this. So if we look at it, it's pretty much all a low B. The only time that it changes up is we go to a low D, which is on the third fret of the B string. It's the, um, the interplay of the different time signatures that uh, it makes this part uh, interesting and also a little bit challenging. So we're going to come in to start with with two eighth notes. I've written this in as a pickup. Now this is just some notes that come in before the first full measure of the song. Uh, after that, the change between the time signatures for the most part, uh, at least for the first half, is going to follow a 4-4 four, four to 5-4. That is, we're going to have four beats followed by five beats, followed by four beats, followed by five beats. And after that, it's going to change a little bit. So our first part of it comes in on the four, the fourth beat of the, the pickup bar. Uh, and that's going to come in here, four and one. We're going to hold that low B for a full four beats plus the first three beats of the next measure. And then we're going to have four eighth notes still on the low B on four and five and in the second bar. So those first two measures plus the pickup bar is going to look like this. Four and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four and five and. And then we're going to do the exact same thing again we'll have four beats of the low B plus an additional three beats and then four and five and in the next measure. So all together so far we've got four and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four and five and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four and five and. Now the next part we're going to have another bar of four, four sustaining the low B through all four beats. And then instead of going to a 5-4 bar, we're going to go to a bar of 3-4 followed by a bar of 3-8. Now if you're uncomfortable uh, switching between uh, time signatures that have different uh, denominators, something over 4 versus something over 8, the easiest thing to do to keep track of it is just keep the eighth note going in your head. So when you're counting the bar of 3-4, you'll be thinking 1 and 2 and 3 and instead of just 1, 2, 3. Because when we get to the bar of 3-8, three eight, three eight, the eighth notes are still consistent. So it's going to end up sounding like 1, 2, 3 or 1 and a. Uh. Putting those two bars together is going to give us 1 and 2 and 3 and 1 and a. Uh. So the eighth note doesn't change at all. Starting from uh, the 4-4 bar before that, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, and a. Uh. I'll do that again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, and a. Uh. Or 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and 1, and 2, and 3, and 1, and a. Uh. So we're coming in on the third eighth note in that 3-8 bar. Then we're back to... 4-4 four, four for two bars. We're going to hold the low B for three and a half beats. We're going to come in with this low D on the and of four. This is the third fret of the low B string. One and two and three and four and. And then we'll come in on the and.
and a one of the next bar. So one and two and three and four and and. We're gonna hold that until the and of four in the next bar. So putting those two four four bars together, it's gonna look like this. One and two and three and four and and two three four and. And then the last bar is just four eighth notes within a three four bar. One and two and. So I'm gonna put the whole thing together from the very beginning of the part. Here we go. One, two, three. Four and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four and five and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four and five and one, two, three, four. One and two and three and one and uh, one and two and three and four and and two, three, four and one and two. And that's going to lead us right into the main part. This part's going to come up all over the song. It's number two in the transcription, and it looks like this. So we're starting on the second fret of the E string in this case. And we've got these little uh, groupings of three for the most part, uh, followed up by a grouping of four at the end. At least that's the way I think of it. So you've got second fret to open E, back to the second fret. And then you're going to do that again. Second fret, open E, second fret. So, so far we've got two, open, two, two, open, two. And because we're in four, the figure is going to be uh, floating around, hitting the the downbeats and the upbeats. So it's going to kind of undulate through the part. Um, so so far we've got two open, two open. Sorry, two open, two two open two. The next part we're going to start on the second fret of the E string again, but we're going to go immediately down to the third fret of the low B string, the D. From there we're going to go to the second fret of the B, that's a C sharp, and then we're going to finish it up on the open B. So far we've got two open, two, two open, two, two, three on the B string, two open. And to finish it off we've got two open, two, that other, or another three note figure on the E string. And then finally, two, three on the E string back to open. So all together we've got two open, two, two open, two, two, three on the B string, two open, two on the E open, two, two, three open. I'll put that all together again. Now let's look at part three in the transcription. This is what you might consider the verse, even though it happens only once in the song. And it's going to look like this. transcription you'll see that we start in a bar of 15 8 and then we go to mostly 7 4 and then we finish it off with a bar of 13 8 now the the figure itself is almost identical throughout all of the parts the reason that we're in a bar of 15 8 to begin with is because there's an eighth note rest in all of the string instruments in the guitar and the bass before the part actually comes in so that sets the whole figure off by an eighth note, so we need to add that eighth note into the bar to compensate. But otherwise, it's identical to the 7 4 bar, which is where we're going to start to begin with. That looks like this. So we're starting on the fifth fret of the E string, and 
Again, keeping track of the eighth notes in these uh, complex time signatures is going to make uh, playing the riffs a whole lot easier. So when we start on the fifth fret of the E string, we're going to sustain that for three eighth notes. We're going to cover beat one and the first part of beat two. One and two. Or if you prefer, you can think of each hit as a cluster of individual eighth notes. So you could think of this as one, two, three. The next hit is going to be on the third fret of the A string on C. We're going to hold that for four total eighth notes. One, two, three, four. So far we've got one, two, three, one, two, three, four, or one and two and three and four. From there, we're going to come back to the fifth fret on the E string, and when we hit this note, we're going to bend it up a bit. The guitars and the bass both bend it up. And it's about a half step, it's not quite a half step. If you're not comfortable with doing bends on the bass, what we're trying to do is get the pitch of the fifth fret to somewhat match the pitch of the sixth fret. It's actually, if you're on a fretless instrument, it's going to match the pitch between the fifth and sixth fret. So it's actually what we would call a quarter step because it's half of a half step. So um, you're going to want to keep that quarter step in your ear when you do the bend because you want to land on it. And if you're uncomfortable doing a bend, you can just slide up a little bit if you're on a fretless instrument or you could actually slide all the way up the half step if you're on a fretted instrument and uh, it'll work out just fine. Or, and from there, we're going to hold that bend release of the A for another three eighth notes, another beat and a half, and then we're going to end on the second fret of the E string. So all together, I'm just going to just count the individual eighth notes as I go through it. It will look like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, and one, two, three, one, two. Do that again. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, and one, two, three, one, two. The 15-8 bar in the beginning, it's the exact same figure with the exact same values. We just wait a split second. We wait for one eighth note before we start the figure. See, we could think of it like this. Three, four, one. Starting with that second bar, I'm in 7-4. Everything's landing uh, nicely on a beat or on the offbeat. We don't have that shift of an eighth note. This is going to continue through the next couple bars after we've played, <clears throat> excuse me, four bars of the um, original figure, the one starting on the fifth fret of the E string, we're going to take this entire shape and we're going to move it down a string. So instead of starting on the fifth fret of the E string, we're going to start on the fifth fret of the B string. And we're going to do the exact same uh, note lengths and the exact same note relationships. We'll start on the fifth fret of the B. We'll go up to the third fret of the E, back to the fifth fret of the B. We'll bend that a little bit, about a quarter step, and then we will take it down to the second fret of the B. So that's going to look like this. And it's the exact same counts as we were doing in the previous bar. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, and one, two, three, one, two. Um, the final bar, which is a 13 8 bar, we're just chopping a beat off at the end. So instead of holding the last second fret on the B string, the C sharp, for a quarter note or two, the length of two eighth notes, we're only going to hold it for the length of one eighth note. So it'll end up looking like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, and 
one, two, three, one. And then there's a bass break, uh, or a guitar break, I should say, uh, before the bass comes back in. Now let's look at riff number four. This is what you might call the chorus of the song. It's also one of the more confusing parts of the song. If you're looking at the transcription, you'll see that we have a bar of 15-8, followed by a bar of 7-4, followed by a bar of 13-8, and followed by a bar of 6-4. Now there is a pattern here. You might be wondering what it is. Just like in traditional fractions, if we double up our time signatures, we'll get a, an equivalent time signature that lasts for the same amount of time. So if we take our 7-4 bar, double up the top number and the bottom number, we end up with 14-8. So from the first measure to the second measure, we go from 15-8 to 14-8. So all we're doing is chopping off one of the eighth notes. When we get to the next bar of 13-8, we've chopped off another one of the eighth notes. And finally, when we get to the 6-4 bar, if we double up those numbers again, we will end up with 12-8. And yet again, we've chopped off an eighth note. So we've gone from 15 to 14 to 13 to 12. We're just losing an eighth note every single measure. Just like in the verse, we're gonna start with an eighth note rest, a little pause before the part comes in. And we're gonna be going mostly between the second fret on the E string, which is our F sharp, up to the fifth fret on the A string, which is D. And after the little eighth note rest, we're going to hold this F sharp for a beat and a half, or if you want to think of it as clusters of eighth notes, it would be three eighth notes, the length of three eighth notes. So after the little rest, it would be one, two, three, followed by another cluster of three two, three, another beat and a half. We'll have a single F sharp eighth note on its own and then jump up to the fifth fret on the A string, the D. We're gonna hold that for two beats. Then we're gonna hit the D again. We're gonna hold it for three beats, three eighth notes. And finally, we'll hit the D one last time and only hold it for two eighth notes. So what that looks like all together is Rest, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. And when we move on to the seven, four bar, we're gonna lose the eighth note at the beginning of the bar, the little pause. We're also gonna lose the third eighth note hit. So we'll start immediately on the F sharp. We'll hold that for three beats. I shouldn't say we're going to lose the third eighth note hit, it's just going to get absorbed into the second hit. So we'll hold the first note in the 7-4 bar for one, two, three, for three eighth notes. And then we'll hit the F sharp again, and we'll hold it for four eighth notes, one, two, three, four. From there we jump up to the D, and it's the same as it was in the previous bar. A D for two eighth notes, a D for three eighth notes, and a D for two eighth notes. So that seven four bar looks like one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. Now when we get on into the 13 eight bar, we're going to take away an eighth note from the end of the bar. So that final hit on D, instead of lasting for a quarter note or the equivalent length of two eighth notes, it's only gonna last for one eighth note. So that bar looks like one, two, three on the F sharp. One, two, three, four on the F sharp again. Then we're up to two beats on D. One, two, three on D again. And finally, a single hit of an eighth note on the D. Then we get into the six, four bar or the 12, eight bar, if you want to think of it like that and we're gonna go to the second fret on the A, this is B. We're gonna hold each of these hits for a dotted quarter, which is the same length as three eighth notes. So it would be one, two, three, one, two, three. Then we'll go to an open A for one, two, three, one, two, three. Or that last bar, if you wanna think of it in traditional six, four. One and two and three and four and five and six and 
So if we put all of those bars together in this part, and this is going to repeat a couple times, but it's not going to change. We put all of these bars together, it will look like this, nice and slow, and I'm going to count the individual eighth notes. One, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, let's look at riff number five. Now, I've numbered it five in the transcription, but I've also numbered it 2A. This is because it's an extension of the riff number two, the main riff. But all we've done here is instead of playing each note as an individual eighth note, we've extended it, we've augmented it, and made quarter notes out of every single note. So instead of one and two and, sorry, one and two and three and one, having trouble counting it, instead of we're going to treat each one as quarter notes, and I'll try to stomp my legs so you can see it. But the riff itself is going to be the same. Second, open, second, second, open, second, second, third on the beat, second, open, second, open, second, second, third, open. But they're all going to be quarter notes. So in order to make the riff uh, fit comfortably into standard time signatures, we're going to have four bars of 3-4 followed by a bar of 4-4. Four, four. One, two, three, 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 four. All right, let's look at the next couple of riffs, the interlude section, which is very heavily driven by the bass and features a lot of atmospheric guitar over it. The primary riff, which I'm calling number six, is in 7-4, and it looks like this. It's going to be all on the low B, kind of like, or, or almost entirely on the low B, kind of like the intro. We're going to have two quarter notes on beat one and beat two. Then we'll have a hit on the end of three, right into a full beat on four. We'll have another eighth rest followed by an and. Then we will rest on beat six and we'll have a full beat on seven. So counting it all out nice and slow would look like this. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. Seven, one, two, three, and four, five, and six, seven. And this is primarily what he's going to play through the interlude. It's also what he's going to play through the entire second interlude. In this first interlude, uh, we're also going to move up the neck a little bit, or I should say, up to the second fret. Now, he ch uh, what makes this part a little bit tricky is that he changes on the second beat of the measure rather than right on the beginning of the measure. And this is because there's a couple different rhythms going on between the bass and the drums and this was the easiest way to make it fit within standard time signatures. Um, the way he may be thinking of it uh, when he's actually playing the song is that the note does change on the beginning of the measure but he may be thinking of it as changing time signatures or the way he's interpreting the drum beat may be a little different than the way I'm interpreting it. So in order to keep everything with the same rhythm just changing the notes, we have the note changing on the second beat. And that riff, which is 6A, is going to look like this. So 
we start on the open B again, and the rhythm is still going to be the same, one, two, and four, and seven, but on beat two, we're going to change to a C sharp, which is on the second fret of the low B string, and that'll look like one, two, and four, and seven. So only the first beat is on the open low B. All of the other beats are going to be on the C sharp. In the next measure, we're going to hit that C sharp to start with, and then we're going to immediately change to a C natural on the first fret of the B string. Uh, otherwise, it's going to handle exactly like the previous measure. We'll go one, two, and four, and seven. And then in the final measure, we're going to start on the C, just like the other two bars. We're going to start on one note and then switch to another note on beat two. In this case, we're going to start on the first fret C, and we're going to resolve it to the open B. And from there on out, we're going to stay on the open B, just like we were in the beginning of the part. So that last measure looks like one, two, and four, and seven. So putting that part 6A all together, it's gonna look like this. Okay, let's look at part seven, riff number seven. Now there's some pretty cool implied uh, time signatures going on in here. The drummer is pounding out a beat in nine. I'm calling it nine four just to keep things nice and simple. He'll have three bars of nine followed by a bar of six. Now within each of these bars of nine and bars of six, the guitars and the bass are playing all dotted quarter notes. And what that does is it works out uh, evenly within the measure. So within a bar of nine, we get six even hits. And within the bar of six, we get four even hits. So uh, if you want to think of it this way, the guitars and the bass are playing in six followed by a bar of four, whereas the drums are playing in a bar of nine followed by a bar of six. So it gives it this nice undulating offbeat feel to it, but uh, the, the key to remember here is that all of the notes within the bass part are all going to be the same length in this part. And the first measure is going to look like this. This is the first measure. It's also the second measure. We're going to start on the second fret of the E string, and we're going to go up the octave to the fourth fret on the D string. And then to make it easy, we're coming back to an open A. Instead of a fifth fret A, we're gonna come to the open A, to second fret on the A, to the first fret on the A, and then finally the third fret on the E. So we've got two on the E, four on the D, open A, second fret on the A, first fret on the A, and finally third fret on the E. And each note is going to be changing on uh, every, every fourth eighth note. Each beat is going to last for, or each hit I should say, is going to last for three eighth notes. So I'm going to try to stomp my leg nice and high so that you can see where the changes are, but the first hit will come on a downbeat, the next hit will come on an upbeat, then back to a downbeat, and back to an upbeat. And it's going to just keep rotating between those two. Just like that. The third bar, almost exactly the same as the first two bars, except instead of ending on the third fret of the E string, we're going to end on the second fret of the E string. So we'll have second fret on the E, fourth fret on the D, open A, second fret on the A, first fret on the A, second fret on the E. Same rhythm as before. And then the final bar in this first half of the figure is going to be in 6-4, but every beat is, or every hit I should say, is still going to be 
uh, dotted chords are still going to be three eighths long. And we'll have a fourth fret on the E string to start with. We'll go to the second fret on the A string, down to the open A, and finally second fret on the A string again. So the first half of this figure, the three bars of nine and the one bar of six, are going to look like this. Now when we get to the second half, the first bar is going to be the same as uh, the first bar of the previous section. Actually, all the bars are going to be the same with the exception of the second bar. So that first bar is the same. The second bar is uh, the little melodic figure that pokes out. So we're starting on the second fret of the E just like we usually do. But instead of going to the fourth fret of the D, instead of going to the octave, we're going to go one string past that. We're going to end up on the fourth fret of the G. And what uh, the bass player does is he slides into it just a little bit. And that's one of the, uh, the cool things about the fretless bass is you can get all these quarter tones within, um, within the slide rather than just getting third fret to fourth fret. You'll get all of the notes in between. If you're playing on a fretted instrument, you can just slide from the third fret to the fourth fret. Uh, it'll work just fine. From there, we're going to end up on the second fret of the G. We're going to jump down to the third fret on the A. Then we're going to do another one of these little slides. We're going to just kind of glide into the fifth fret on the D. And then we're going to do the reverse of that. We're going to glide backwards into the fourth fret of the D. So that whole riff together with the slides looks like. And then the next two bars are the same as they were in the previous half. So the second half all together of this riff looks like this. stretch here there's not really a whole lot of new information that we have to learn what I'm calling riff number eight is just a little bit of a bridge to get us between um, the second interlude and the outro where they go back to some variations on the main riff and all he's doing is hitting the fourth fret on the low B strings grabbing a D sharp right there uh, and he's holding that for seven full beats. He's coming out of the other 7-4 bar, so it's appropriate that this would be in 7-4 as well. He's coming out of this part. Which is why I've also called number eight uh, a 6-B, because it is paired with that previous part. So we would have... And hold that for seven beats. From there, we're back into the main riff, but these are uh, augmentings of the other riffs. We're going to end up on that riff number five to start with, that riff 2A, if you want to think of it as that, where the main riff is played entirely in quarter notes. And from there, after we've played a few revolutions of that, we're going to extend the um, uh, the parts of the riff again. So instead of playing them as all individual eighth notes, we're going and we extended them to quarter notes. Now we're going to extend them to dotted quarter notes. They're going to last for the equivalent of three eighth notes. So it's going to have that kind of offbeat feel of uh, the previous riff, where everything was played as um, everything was played as dotted quarter notes. So the drummer's playing primarily in three, but the guitar and the bass are implying 
a uh, feeling of four, and that's going to look like this. So if I were to count everything out, it would look like this. is extending those rhythms yet again. So instead of dotted quarters, which are three eighth notes long, we're going to extend it again to half notes. And half notes take up two quarter notes or four eighth notes. So we've gone from one eighth note a piece to two a piece to three a piece and finally to four a piece. And it's going to be the same riff as it was before, just extending everything to half notes. So it ends up looking like this. And then when we go through that again, there's just a little bit of a variation on the ending. So in that last bar, we're going to have second fret on the E string up to the third fret on the E string, and then we'll have two quarter notes, an open E, and a fourth fret on the low B string, and that just sustains as uh, the guitar's feedback and the song ends. Well, there it is, guys. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Don't forget to grab the transcription downstairs, as well as leaving me any comments or questions you may have about the song. Until next time.